What were the 60s like? I can't remember back that far. <laughs> Throughout the 1960s, values began to change and boundaries were tested. Amid the controversial Vietnam War, many people joined the counterculture generation and stood up for their new beliefs. These are their stories. In 1960, the first birth control pill was approved by the FDA. With its creation, the values and opinions towards sexuality loosened. This led to the free sex lifestyles many carried throughout the 60s. A rock music festival that drew hundreds of thousands of young people to a dairy farm in White Lake, New York over the weekend came to an end today. And we have a report from Richard O'Brien. On August 15th, 1969, the iconic Woodstock Music and Art Fair began. This festival, featuring 32 different music acts, brought over 400,000 people and marked the end for the counterculture generation. What's your name? Rotten Ronnie. And how old are you? I'm 73. Were you at Woodstock in 1969? Yes, I was, and it was the ball. So what was that like? It was like a bunch of young hippies, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Because they all smoke dope. The legendary festival became so popular that a movie was created in 1970 to document it, using actual footage from the three-day concert. What's your name? Pat. How old are you? 59. What was Woodstock like? I think I was 14 and I had never heard of it until the movie came out. And we went and saw the movie and... For the most part, most people in the beginning was having a really good time, but they had no idea they were going to have the turnout that they did, and it was just, it was too overwhelming for them. Counterculture in Vietnam are synonymous with the 1960s. In order to get troop numbers up, the U.S. forced men to register for the draft. This angered many Americans. To show their disapproval, they burnt uh, their draft cards along with American flags. They organized anti-war rallies to express their feelings toward the nine-year-long conflict. Sing it! One, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, don't get down. Louder! Good evening. The pot and psychedelic cult, whatever else it may be, is new and different. Unlike the nihilist beatniks of a few years back, today's LSD cultists say that they are turned on, not turned off. Many members of the council culture generation began to expose themselves to various substances to enhance or alternate their reality. Even Timothy Leary, a Harvard professor, urged people to try LSD. America. Uh, sense of Declaration of Independence uh, said life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness means the right to get high. The morals are going to be half The kids just don't buy that whole uh, uptight, uh, keep your legs crossed, uh, pure method. The aim of the game is to feel good. And the function of government is to get everyone high and feel good. Roger climbed to promise in the 1960s and the world learned more about the existence of drugs. What all did you do? We just laid around, smoked pot, and met strange people. Now I'm a believer. What joy is there in life? Life should be, life is, should, is and should be ecstasy. Being alive should be a joy, and it's a drag. Hippies wanted to rebel from the mainstream life, which they called the establishment, and create their own alternative culture based on peace, love, and harmony. Different protests at Berkeley marked the beginning of the free speech movement, which intended for their choice to say what they pleased. By professing their desires for peace, 
love, and harmony. Some hippies and flower children were part of the Summer of Love in 1967 in San Francisco. The Council for a Summer of Love proclaims a summer of love in the city of San Francisco. We believe that Haight-Ashbury is the focus of a universal spiritual awakening. The summer of love is an expression of this awakening. We call upon the world to help us celebrate the infinite holiness of life. Look at all the lovely people. One part of the 1960s that is still prominent today is the art and music. Among the musical artists that arose, some included the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and Jimi Hendrix. Pop art and minimalism became popular, and artists such as Andy Warhol and Bridget Riley made big steps in the 20th century art scene. As cultural pioneers of their time, members of the counterculture generation pushed limits and took chances with their futures, all for the sake of peace, love, and free speech. Although their actions were frequently questioned in the 1960s, their influence continues. Thanks to their contributions to society, our world has grown and evolved into what it is today. From the birth control pill to the welcoming of free speech, their once controversial views have shaped the way the modern world thinks. Out of all the aspects of the counterculture, the music has lasted the longest and is still popular today. Without free thinkers like those of the counterculture movement, the 21st century would not be as it is now. Ladies and gentlemen, Santana. Santana.